Leave Insert Higher Level Maths 2021. This is the solution paper to paper one, question one. So question one is a complex numbers question. Um, I think by all accounts, it was one of the easier complex numbers questions we've seen in a few years. Starts off with four minus two i over two plus four i is equal to zero plus k i, where k is an element of z and i squared is minus one, find the value of k. So basically do a division of complex numbers. So to divide complex numbers, what we do is we multiply top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of the bottom. So it'll be four minus two i over two plus four i, and then we multiply the top and the bottom by two minus four i. So on the top line, you get four by two is eight. You get four by minus four i is minus 16 i. You get minus two i by two is minus four i and minus 2i by minus 4i will be plus 16i squared, or 8i squared rather, plus 8i squared. And then on the bottom, uh, 2 by 2 is 4, 2 by minus 4i is minus 8i, 4i by 2 is plus 8i, and then 4i by minus 4i is minus 16i squared. So what we get here is on the top, you have eight, and then this plus eight i squared, i squared is minus one, so that's minus eight altogether, cancels with the eight, so minus eight and eight. Then we have minus 16i minus four i, so that's minus 20i. And then on the bottom, the minus eight i and plus eight i cancel, we have four minus 16 i squared. i squared again is minus one. So minus 16 by minus one is 16 plus four is 20. So that's over 20. So that's equal to minus 20 div divided by 20 is minus one. So that's just equal to minus i. So the answer there is zero minus i and k is equal to minus one. For the second part B, find the square root of minus five plus 12 i. Now there's a couple of ways you could go about this. A lot of students might have gone straight for the Moivre's theorem, which is fine. You can do the Moivre's theorem, but uh, the angle that you get doesn't work out very nicely. It works out as a, a decimal with a good few decimal places. So it's a bit awkward, but there's an easier way to do it. We can say that the square root of minus five plus 12 i when we write that in this form, it's equal to a plus b i. So that's the form that it's written in. So if I can just figure out what a and b are, then I can I can uh, write it in that form. So in this little equation here, I'm going to square both sides, square that and square that. So on the left hand side, I get minus five plus twelve i. And on the right hand side, square this out. So square the first is a squared twice the product, so that's plus 2abi, and then the square the second, so that'll be b squared i squared, uh, plus b squared i squared. Now i squared is minus one, so that would be minus b squared. And I'm just gonna reorder things to say a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. So I've put the real parts first and the imaginary part second. And that's still equal to our minus five plus 12 i. But what we can do now is we can equate the real with the real. So this with this and the imaginary with the imaginary. So I can say minus five is equal to a squared minus b squared. And I can say 12 is equal to two a b. Now I have simultaneous equations that I can solve together to find a and b. So it'll be a substitution. Work on this side first. Uh, 12 divided by 2 is 6 is equal to a, b. Isolate a then, a is equal to 6 over b. And now I can sub that into this equation here. So instead of a, I'm going to write 6 over b. So 6 over b squared minus b squared is equal to minus 5. 
square out this to get 36 over b squared minus b squared. Take the 5 over to the other side there, plus 5 is equal to 0. I don't like fractions here, so I'm going to go and multiply everything by b squared. So I'll get 36 minus b to the power of 4 plus 5 uh, b squared is equal to 0. And rearranging that and also multiplying by minus 1 to make this leading coefficient positive, I'll get this equation here. I'll get b to the power of 4 minus 5b squared minus 36 is equal to 0. So this is actually just a quadratic equation in disguise. Instead of having a power of 2, 1 and 0, we have a power of 4, 2 and 1. Um, so what we can do is we can factorise this b to the power of 4 as b squared by b squared. Let it equal to 0. And then look for factors of minus 36 that when added together give you minus 5. So those factors will be minus 9 by plus 4. So minus 9 by plus 4 will give you minus 36. Minus 5 plus the 4 will give you the minus um, or minus 9 plus 4 will give you the minus 5. So minus 9 plus 4. So that gives us b squared is equal to 9. And that means b is equal to plus or minus 3. And this one is b squared is equal to minus 4. But there's no solution for that. You can't square uh, an integer and then get um, a minus number as the answer. So there's no solution there. You can cross that one out. So b is plus and minus 3. Now we just need to find out what a is. Well, a is equal to 6 divided by b. So 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And a is equal to 6 divided by minus 3, which is minus 2. So the first solution is 2 plus 3i. And the second solution is minus 2 minus 3i. On to part C then, this one says use the Moivre's theorem to find the three roots of z cubed equal to minus 8 and give each of your answers in the form of a plus b i where a and b are real numbers. So if we have z cubed is equal to minus 8, to use um, the Moivre's theorem we need to write that in polar form. So just a quick sketch of what that complex number looks like. It's actually here minus 8. So it's an easy enough complex number to put into polar form. Um, the modulus of it is just 8, so or is equal to 8. And then the angle theta is pi there. It's just 180 degrees, so theta is equal to pi. So it's easy enough to write as a, as a um, polar complex number. We need to write it in general polar form because we have z cubed. We're going to end up finding z which is minus 8 to the power of a third. So it's a it's a rational power. So what we need to do is say z cubed is equal to 8 times uh, the cosine of the angle pi plus 2n pi. And then that's plus i sine of pi plus 2n pi. And now if I want to get the cubed root of this and get z, that'll be z is equal to 8 to the power of a third times the cosine of pi plus 2n pi over 3 plus i sine of pi plus 2n pi over 3. Now all I do here is I let n equal to 0, then I let n equal to 1, and then I let n equal to 2, and that will give me my three roots. So for n equal, let's say at n equal to 0, z is equal to 8 to the power of a third is 2, times the cosine of, if I put 0 in here, that'll just be pi over 3, plus i sine pi over 3. So that's equal to 2 times the cosine of pi over 3. Well, that's just a half. 
and then plus i the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 so that's plus root 3i so then uh, sorry root 3 over 2i rather so then i just multiply by 2 across here to get 2 by half is 1 and then 2 by root 3 over 2 is plus root 3i so that's the first root of my equation then i go to at n equal to 1 so that would be z is equal to, again, a to the power of a third is 2 times the cosine of pi plus 2 times 1 pi. So pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi. So that's 3 pi over 3 plus i sine of 3 pi over 3. So that's equal to 2 times 3 pi over 3, that's just pi, so the cosine of pi is minus 1. And then the sine of the same thing, the sine of pi is 0, so that's plus 0i. So that's equal to 2 by minus 1 is minus 2 plus 0i. And I'll write it as that because it did ask it for in that form a plus b i so minus 2 plus 0 i of course that's just equal to minus 2 it's a real root but we write it in that form because that's what we're asked for and then the third one you might actually be able to guess the third one for n equal to 2 it's going to be the complex conjugate of this but i'll just go through it just to show you the maths behind it so that's z is equal to 2 times cosine of we have pi plus 2 times 2 pi, so pi plus 4 pi. So that's 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. So that's equal to 2 times the cosine of 5 pi over 3 is a half. Uh, plus i times the sine of 5 pi over 3 is minus root 3 over 2 times i. Multiply across by the 2, we'll get 1 minus root 3i, which is the conjugate of the first one that we got, that we were expecting. So that's the complex numbers question from the Leave and Search 2021. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.